Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, it's Laurie Thompson. Hey, Laurie. Hey, hey, Laurie. Hey, hey. How you doing? Yeah, what, you know. How, how you doing? doing? How you doing? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Not not a lot. I mean, I love this week with Thanksgiving because the whole week kind of gets the Thanksgiving vibe, you know, where people are friendlier and kinder, even mm-hmm. at Sam's Club where everybody's rushing to get all their, you know, stovetop stuff in for the big day tomorrow. But mm-hmm. yeah, I like, I'm doing well. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah. Uh, um, um, so anyway... Uh, this is Thanksgiving week, and actually, this show, the thing we're doing right now, will broadcast tonight. So whatever we say can be like, "Hey, tomorrow is Thanksgiving," and it's it's all oh. going to be okay. Okay, you know, yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah, because Thanksgiving, I had a new appreciation when I started working with you mm-hmm. because of the studio audience, and they would come in droves. You decided we would do the show for Thanksgiving, and they responded so. Well, there were just fleets of them. Well, well, and, see, it was a day they could come down because they had the day off. You know, yeah, so and they was, didn't come empty-handed. And the reason, the, the re, you, mm. know, you know, the reason I did Thanksgiving uh, is because Thanksgiving doesn't really start till two in the afternoon. You know, that, right. for eating and things like that. So we could do it, and we could kind of have a little kind of Thanksgiving with each other. Yes, shows. that was exactly yeah. it. So I thought that 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 appealed to me, you know. Yeah, that appealed to me, and then uh, then you could go do whatever you were going to do on Thanksgiving. And uh, I don't know, did I ha- did I have a family? I had a f- no, I ne- really never had family out there. I had my mother. No, I didn't. I didn't so I had my mother. Was, it was my mother yeah. dead by the time we went to Live One Hundred and Five. <laughs> no, she was. Oh not no, she dead. died. She died. No, she died. Here in, in when I went when I was in New York, because I remember I got the uh, I got the message uh, I got a call from my business manager Gary, uh, saying uh, I have news for you your mother has died. Uh, here's the doctor, and he handed the doctor over to me and he, yes she passed and you know oh I know what it was I, th- that wasn't when she died they called me to ask me if I wanted to let her die. Oh really well, you had. Yeah, I was in Macy's shopping, and the doctor said uh, she refuses to eat, okay? And uh, we could feed her. We can force feed her with fluids and everything like that, you know, and so on and so forth. But, you know, she wants to die. Yeah. You know, and so do you want us to, like, not give her any sustenance and, uh, you know, food and things like that? And I said, yeah, just let her go, you know. And then I got a call the next day that she had gone. But that it was in Macy's that I had to make the decision to let her die. Wow! Now, when that's bizarre, because on cell phones you never know the context, and yeah. when you're calling someone, I can't remember what I ta- said to the doctor. I think it was something like, "Well, she's annoying anyway, so let her go." <laughs> you probably <laughs> did. <laughs> you do. <goof. laughs> yeah, I was in Des Moines at the time, mm-hmm. covering the ramp mm-hmm. up to the Trump Hillary face off. Yeah, and I was in the van. I was driving to some press conference in the station van, and my brother-in-law called, and I thought this is weird. And so he said, "Your mother just died," and I said, "Well, I think I better pull over." <laughs> That's what I remember I said because I didn't think yeah. that you know while you're racing at seventy well, miles an hour. Well, you really liked you. You liked your mother. I remember that, you and your father. She was she was a very good mother. She was very flawed, but she loved us ferociously and she was fun she was a very well, my, fun my, my mother was kind of cloying yeah yeah you know what I'm saying she kind of like yeah, it, it, it was weird it was weird you know yeah. yeah see I had you were an only child I had two others 
to amortize the cloyingness. You know, mm -hmm. it was just spread over three as opposed to yeah. all. But the oldest child and the only child, I think, have a special road to hoe because our parents are learning. Were you an only child? No, I was oh, an oldest child. Oldest child. So oh, okay. I had my parents for four years all to myself. Yeah. And I still think my sisters resent that. I do. Well, I mean, it yeah. sounds. Yeah, but the, being the older sister, you had you had more responsibilities than any of the other kids. That's yeah. true. You got to be a role model, and when you're looking after those kids, when you're only three of them, yeah. with three at home, and something bad happens, somebody you know punches through the drywall or uh, you know wrecks their their big wheel, you're the one who's going to have to explain it. Yeah, well, and so you're right. It, it does give me a. Uh, uh, yeah, because I, I don't know the, the feeling of having a brother or a sister because I was an only child. Yeah. My, my, we almost, I almost had a brother or sister uh, because my mother was pregnant, but then she had a miscarriage. And I, yeah, do you I, remember that? I remember, remember? I remember that too. I think I reacted by going, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, all, more stuff for me. Yay! I am the grand poobah of this your childhood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love having sisters. See, the thing is, though, with three, three is an unstable number because people pair up. I mean, they pair up in opinions, they pair up in friendships, they pair up. So I was very close to my middle sister who won't even speak to me now and sends my cards and letters back, return to sender. Uh, so she's mad about something. I'm not sure exactly. Well, you yet. know what it is? M middle child's, uh, m middle child's, boy, I've, I've lost <laughs> all use of the English language. Middle children, <laughs> middle children uh, 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 are always weird because they, 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 they have no place in, uh, in the family. You, you as an older child, well, I've got to take care of the rest of the kids. And the yeah. younger child goes, give me everything because I'm so cute. And the middle <laughs> one is going, Huh? Anybody notice I'm around? You know? Yeah. Well, my middle sister, she was the exception to the middle child syndrome. She was whip smart. She was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I got my driver's license, instead of calling my high school cronies to take, you know, go cruising with me, I would take my sister because she was smarter than anybody I knew and funnier than anybody I knew. But now, I don't know, she's gone when you when they grow up people grow up and you move away from each other it just gets all nutty it's weird especially probably yeah. when the when the parents finally go yeah you know, that's it then that's then the then thing. you have no need for each other well i you know. i thought uh, outs, we did, but then outs, uh, outside of being a brother and sister and uh, or whatever which is i think an important function you really don't have need for each other in any way outside of the family unit that you forged, you know. Right, and I would have been very, very happy. I would like to refresh that bond, but now it's in a completely different situation, and I was, an, albeit an asshole, when I drank alcohol thoroughly. I mean, <laughs> there were times, I, you know, I, not I don't the know, time. I don't know if I ever remember you being an asshole. Well, I hope not. Yeah, I didn't become an asshole very, until... I got around my family and they bugged the hell out of me because yeah. <laughs> they had gone on, see, and had their Midwestern life. And I was like an interloper coming back in. And I can see where it was an adjustment and maybe not a pleasant one. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But, but when your parents are gone, what I have a cousin in my hometown, but my, my best, my other cousin just died of some immune thing, like immediately. He was fine. And then two weeks later, he was dead. We still don't know. I still don't know the full scoop. And so there's no, what reason do I have to go back to that hometown? Except yeah. to just walk around. Yeah. Yeah. The, the hometown, so, is, yeah. hometown is Clinton. Well, yeah. And the hometown was mom and dad, I realized. Yeah. When they're gone. Yeah. The draw, not so much. And hmm. the town's changed. I don't know many people there now. Wow. Well, you know, today is uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Yes. See, we can do that because we're actually running this on the day we're doing it. <laughs> and uh, today is Thanksgiving, but it's uh, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. But today 
is the 60th anniversary of the death of JFK. Oh, I did not realize that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Now you see, I don't think you it, you have a different relationship to it because how old were you 60 years ago? Three. Yeah. Do you remember him being shot? I don't. I don't remember it. I I remember RFK and, and uh, Martin Luther King. Well, being Well, that shot. was that was a few years later. Right. You that's know. when. Uh, but but I you know who remember? You don't remember very much when you were three years old. You know. Not. You have impressions, and everything is large and abstract. I think there may, be, if you had a traumatic something happen, maybe you remember something when you were three. You know? Yeah, maybe. But but yeah. I mean, like I remember, God, when I was four, drowning in the Russian River, and my parents pulled me out, and I they made sure I resuscitated me and everything. I was okay. I remember that. Yeah. But I don't remember anything else when I was three and four and around in there. You, you know? know, you're right about the trauma because I was hit by a car when I was four. I mean, it was a parade downtown and my baby, my middle sister had just been born. Mm -hmm. So I could not have been more than four. I might have been three. Yeah. Um, so do the math. She might have been three. And I ran out in front of a car and I don't remember the car hitting me. I don't remember anything else. I do remember like my mom coming to pick me up and then taking me into a department store and everybody crowding around me. That made a big impression. But I thought, man, I should get hit by cars more often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, I'm, I'm being paid attention to here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't have a lot of skills. I can't sing and dance, but I can get hit by cars. Everybody cares about me. Yeah. yeah. It's the me show. The me show. <laughs> Our favorite show. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I, um, but anyway, uh, I remember it. Uh, I, I was home from the Navy, uh, for, and I can't remember what, why I was home from the Navy, but I went, it was like a vacation. And mm -hmm. I went home, mm -hmm. and Kennedy was killed, you know, and I was in my home in San Anselmo when that happened. And then I remember then about two days later sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden they're bringing out uh, uh, Oswald. Uh, yeah. And, and, and then, uh, and I watched him get shot on TV. It's like that, on was the, TV. that was the yeah. only crime where there were millions of witnesses. Yeah. yeah. And that was before CCTV. Mm -hmm. I know that to me is the most one of the more interesting aspects of the story. Because there have been assassination attempts on presidents before, mm -hmm. but none quite this convoluted. Yeah. Like what yeah, like really well, well, I, there's still everybody's questioning what happened. You know, the Oliver Stone movie was a pretty interesting exploration. No, it wasn't because that guy in 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 uh, my, in New Orleans, New Orleans, uh, I'm trying to remember his name right now, the DA was was an uh, he was he's an idiot. Was it Jim Garrison? <laughs> Jim Garrison, yeah, he yeah. was an idiot. I mean, I don't know. He was there was some kind of publicity he was trying to get. And yeah. I, I don't. I think he was on the on the on the. He was on to something, but not on to what it really was. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you fo have to follow those false leads to get to the meat of the real. Well, meat. I've often said that, and I've often felt over the years that the reason why they have kind of hidden what happened in reality is because, really, if you want to look at it, it was a mob hit. Is what I believe really? it was. Yeah. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, because the mob, he did everything. He, he it, it was really, it was kind of not a, a JFK. It was RFK that was doing all the going after the mob and the mafia right. and so on and so forth. And they wanted him dead, but they realized it would be easier if they killed the president, because if mm -hmm. they killed the president, uh, it would, uh, it would cut him off at the knee it would cut Robert right off at the knees he wouldn't be right you know he wouldn't have the position anymore. anymore yeah and so I believe the mob had a lot to do with it I I, I it just it, it, it was too perfect to not be a mob hit yeah it was yeah. dramatic that makes a lot of sense yeah uh, yeah, yeah plausible at least so anyway I the, but, but but you know they don't want the population to believe and think and know that their president 
uh, was killed as a mob hit. You know? Yeah, I can so, see why that would have been So that's fine. why we hide it and keep hiding it, you know. Mm, so, yeah. Anyway, it's a... We could go through that and all of that, but I I don't know who who knows who killed who knows yeah. who killed Kennedy. But and I'm wondering the mom, as we know it, has been uh, typified in movies, you know, the, the gangsters and the whole thing. There has to be like the equivalent of a mom. Do you think it's the cartels that are are now the mob, the well, drug cartels? Well, the mob out still of e- the mob still exists, but it's a little a little more sophisticated, you know. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I live here in New York, and I used to believe me. I knew, I knew the mobsters. You know, uh-huh. you couldn't help, but everybody knew a mobster somewhere in New York because right. you could, you know, if you threw a everybody rock, knew a guy. If you threw a rock, you'd hit one. You know, <laughs> and of course, you'd have you rubbed out. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, I remember there was a guy by the name of, uh, and it came up in the in the uh, in the Gotti documentary they did on Netflix, yeah. And um, there was this guy that was killed, this mobster named, uh, well, we called him D.B. It was De Benedetto, I think was his last name. Uh-huh. Uh, and we call, called him D.B. And he pretty much was the porn mobster in New York and, and ran all of them, uh, not only porn here, but all over the United States. And so I, I got to know him because he would, like he showed up at this party that Al Goldstein was having because, <laughs> of course, he knew D.B. And yeah. you know, D.B. sitting around going, he said, I remember he's sitting at the dinner at the dinner or at the party or whatever going, you know, the, attorney, the district attorney out in Long Island wants me to move away. He says, the nerve of it. Well, I'm a businessman. <laughs> you know, it was typical mob, you know. And yeah. I'm going, oh my god, I better not get too close; it might rub off on me, you know. Well, and the the association between porn and the mob. I mean, that wouldn't be. Oh, the mob controlled the porn. Right, yeah, and then the porn became so accessible via the internet and VHS tapes and things like that. So there was no the the. Uh, I don't the think the ins- mob has any part of it anymore. You know? I don't think so because it's all legal. Well, yeah, that's yeah. What. The other problem with porn was if you compare it to drugs, if you compare it to a lot of other things, it's not a lot of money. You know? Right. You know? So, so if you're going to if you're going to be in a profession which is illegal and they're going to bust you for, then you may as well do uh, drugs. Okay, yeah, take the chance with always drugs. Always an appetite. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but also, I mean. Um, I just don't. I, I don't think the mob's involved anymore. I think it, porn is just too accessible, and nobody's getting busted for making it. And yeah. uh, you know, so exactly. it's not it's, laws have changed. It's, so if, if no. not qua, if not legal, it's quasi legal, and right. so it's nothing that the mob could make a lot of money out of. Especially because all you have to, if you want free porn, just go on the internet. You can find it. You know, you can find any. You don't have to leave your house. Yeah, and that's what, when you decriminalize something, you take the monetary incentive out. Yeah. Pretty much. Like people that used to grow Humboldt County, you know, with all those rich pot right, farmers. Right, right, I'm surprised they didn't have a lobby against legalizing pot. Well, you because, know, there is still illegal pot, believe it or not. Because yeah. what happens is it, when, it went le- when it went legal, of course, all these companies got together and they made, uh, had pot, Farms and did pot stuff and made the vapes and the same and the annual. Yeah, but that stuff that stuff's good too. You know, it's fine, but it's supposedly not as good as the stuff the guys are growing up in Mendocino. Really? So yeah, a lot of people are going great. for the illegal stuff. Number one, because it's not as expensive as the government stuff, because yeah, the government's the putting taxes on it and everything else. Right. So the, the the drug dealer has been able to compete, really, with the legalization. And nobody's busting them anymore because what are they doing this illegal? They're just growing the stuff, you know. They shouldn't yeah. be selling it because they don't have a license, but... <laughs> but they've learned to specialize, kind of like uh, yeah. Walt. I mean, I have, a friend, I, have a, I have a friend of mine who lives in New Jersey. You can walk into dispensaries and get this stuff just like that, no problem. 
Uh, and uh, he uh, still buys it from his dealer. He says, yeah, it's, it's well, cheaper, it's better dope, you know. Yeah. So. And, well, I know in Missouri it's legal because a friend of mine who uh, quit drinking alcohol, and I've, I think if alcohol is your problem and you quit drinking alcohol, that's great. If you want to use pot, fine. AA does not feel that way. But I'm like, whatever well, gets AA, you away. AA is very dogmatic, because, and they have to be. You know, they, they do. They have to be tough, and and they they believe that if you're doing pop, that's not good. You know, is it, well, yeah, it is a mood enhancing artificial substance, or by artificial, I just well, mean not I, body made. I just don't see though. Having just had a friend die of cirrhosis of the liver, okay, yeah, you know, uh, and I've always hated, hated booze, always hated booze, uh, and. Um, it was um, it's it's a real corrosive drug. Alcohol. Yeah, oh far, man, far more. And but when you think of pot, pot really isn't corrosive on any level. You know. No, you say the only dangers of pot were uh, was it obesity and pregnancy. And pregnancy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but the problem is, is that like I uh, I have I have a little vape right by my bedside. The uh -huh. only time I get high, actually, is I take it at night to put me to sleep. It's very that good. Works. The sativa, great for sleeping. Take one puff, maybe two puffs tops, I'm out for the rest <laughs> of the night. It does promote sleep. Well, yeah. So deep sleep. You don't wake up until next Friday. And and it has a lot of uh, it has a lot of medicinal uses too. I mean, if you have yeah. certain, certain pain and so on, it can help with that. You know, I mean, it, yeah, it, turmeric does too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they haven't done the kind of research they should do on it, where a doctor says, you know, something, you've got this or you got that. I'm going to prescribe so many grams of pot a day for you, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't hear that, you know. No. And I've never had a doctor say, "This is bothering you. Go home and smoke some dope." You know. You never had one say that. No, no. Even what? even now in New York, where it's legal and everything like that, you know. Yeah, I, I assume, I think they assume, as we are now, that nobody is going to have a cultural taboo on it. Although my husband has never smoked pot. I mean, and he grew up. I don't smoke pot myself anymore either, except for that nightly toke that yeah. I do to put me to yeah. sleep. And that's, well, that's I, you know. Yeah, because I used to love pot for a year. I smoked it every day when I was 19. And then I went into, I got my radio job. And I went in once high and hated it because I, I second guessed everything. And so I never got, I stopped getting high after that. But then I started drinking alcohol. See, I wanted that mellowness. I wanted some relief. That's it to me. I just, yeah, well, went all yeah. And alcohol did it for you. That first glass of Chardonnay and one and a half glasses was even better. And then I would, but that's how it started. I would have that. And then I would just go walk around for four hours when I moved to San Francisco. Yeah, I just, I just the reason I never liked to, I, I used pot too, but I found that I would shut down. I kind of became quiet, withdrawn. Reclusive. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't a great social drug for me. You know, yeah. I mean, I'd sit there and get high with somebody and we just talk back and forth a lot, you know. Uh, I remember. Yeah, but alcohol can make you a little dull. Yeah, I, love, I love the story of my old friend P.J. O'Rourke came over to my place, and we were sitting on the rug of my apartment, because that's the best place to do pot, leaning against a beanbag chair, uh, <laughs> and uh, smoking it and passing it back and forth. And then P.J. at one point, he just talk, and he looks at it, and he says, you know, someday before we're gone, this is going to be legal. Yeah. And he, was, and he well, he was he was almost right. I think he died a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he yeah. was always fun to have on the show because yeah. I mean, he was so smart. He I love smart, smart guy. Smart guy. I liked him, yeah. and he was didn't didn't share my politics, but I liked him. No, I liked him. He was more right wing, and you know what? I really wish they could legalize. He was libertarian. Mushroom. He was libertarian. Liber yeah, yeah. I would describe myself. Mushrooms. Somewhere. Yeah, I'll tell you another good one, and then we got to go here. Uh, what was that one? Uh, ecstasy. Oh gosh! And ecst ecstasy, by the way, folks, 
uh, and uh, uh, maybe somebody will get mad at me for saying this, is not a dangerous drug. Man, I love it. I've had doctors tell me that ecstasy is simply a drug they use for uh, quieting people down or making people happy or whatever. I found that it was just an absolutely glorious drug, had no downsides to it, and when you Lord. were you came down off of it, you were fine, you know. Yeah. But up yeah. up until the time that you came down from it, even the rug smelled good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. this rug feels so good. Yeah. Anyway, it was like short. Hey, listen, <laughs> we we've uh, come to the point here where we've got to say goodbye for this episode. Have a happy Thanksgiving, will you? You too, Ben, and your lovely wife, um, yeah. who is the real divine Miss Anne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now the next step, ne- next episode with you, we will fake that it isn't that that you know Thanksgiving is already passed. Oh, we're just that crafty, aren't yeah. we? And, yeah, and oddly enough, wear the same outfit, okay? Well, I can, or I I'm starting to keep cho- uh, clothing changes in hand. Do Wardrobe you, switch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is our old friend. And companion Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. My pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh yes, Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Lori Thompson, how about that? Uh, you love her. You remember her. You remember us together. Uh, we talked today more about that. We're gonna we're gonna put together a show here uh, uh, with uh, Mar- with Marjorie with uh, uh, Lori and I uh, and then maybe we'll bring in old people that we know we'll bring let Bubs join in occasionally and um, uh, uh, Chuck Farnham by the way uh, Chuck Farnham who's been doing the show and uh, used to do our San Francisco show all the he was one of the regulars on the San Francisco show um, I, I, when I was talking to Lori, she said something, and I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. So I wrote him, and it was true. Uh, Chuck Farnham's mother died. She passed. She was 86, and uh, he, um, he found her, you know, dead, you know, the last Monday, I think it was. So really, we aren't too far away from when it happened. Uh, but uh, I, we, we just, you know, send our best to him and all of that. And please don't don't send him. If you're going to send him any emails or anything, don't say um, thoughts and prayers, okay, or I'm sorry for your loss. Don't use any of that because he was saying he didn't want to hear that, and I know I didn't want to hear it when my father died and when my mother died because she said, everybody comes up and says the same thing. I mean, they mean well, but they say the same thing, and you have to go, oh, thank you so very much, you know. Really thinks he's original, you know. But anyway, uh, our, our, uh, our, 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 I, I, as, as I said to him, I said I didn't know your mother. I think I met her once, but I didn't know your mother. But I know you, and and who I feel sorry for is you, you know. And I, so I, my sympathies go out to you. But uh, you know, he, he, you know, I care, right? And I, I don't have to. Um, in fact, I would probably usually what I'd like to say, and I, I did this to Tony once when his aunt died, and then he cried on the radio. Right, this was when I was over at Sirius XM, and uh, he started to cry when I said this. And his, he told me his uh, his his uh, 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 what was it? His uh, uh, aunt had died, and I said, "Well, you know what?" I said, "What?" I said, "Well, I never liked her anyway," and. I, it, I, that was something I learned to say from uh, Penn Jillette because Penn said like when a guy breaks up with his girlfriend don't tell him oh I'm so sorry to hear that you know uh, you, you, the guy would rather hear you say uh, hey listen uh, uh, okay but uh, you know I didn't like her anyway you know so Anyway, they, I, so I said that to Tony, and Tony started crying. And you, one thing you never want is that when you're doing something with somebody on the air, that suddenly they start crying. It just doesn't work. It, does, it makes you look very bad. Let's bring in the people that are waiting to come on the show right now. And uh, let me see here. If I bring in the Zoom, there they go. They're coming on. There's Charlie, and uh, there's... Uh, Josh Wheeler, 
and there is uh, um, uh, me uh, and uh, we ch uh, Char Charlie, I said, and also Kevin somewhere. But Kevin, the, 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 the empty chair belongs to Kevin. Okay, let's all hear it for Kevin. Let's all, yeah, let's bring. And there's and oh, here comes Jeff, and his wife is waiting now to make sure he gets the audio right. You know, <laughs> this was when I was over at Oh no! Oh no! Here we go. I started to cry when I said uh, this. He's told me his uh, his. Is uh, 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 what was it? <laughs> this is starting to break you up, isn't it, Josh? And I said, Oh, well, no, I'm just what? fixing my hat. Uh oh, I see. And I, Jeff, I Jeff, thing oh. from uh, Jeff, yes, Charlotte. turn off your audio, yes, sir. The guy breaks up with his girlfriend, don't tell him, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, you know? But the guy would rather hear you say, uh, "Hey, listen, mm, uh, mm. Uh, okay, but, uh, you know, I didn't like." <laughs> anyway, hey, I, I, so I said that to Tony, and Tony said, it to me. "One thing you never want is that when you're doing something with someone." What he, he did it? Let's all hear it for Jeff, please. Let's all hear it for Jeff. Yeah. Oh boy, Jeff, Jeff. Haven't you figured it out? What you know? I mean, I I thought your wife would have that one figured out a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, we got it fixed. So anyway, hi. How are all of you? We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Good. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. Well, you're not, Char uh, Charlie. We've already determined that. Yeah. You know, uh, Kevin. What are you doing on uh, Thanksgiving? Where are you going? Absolutely nothing. Um, have no kid here. She's not coming home for Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. And uh, mother-in-law is staying home, so Tina and I are going to have a piece of prime rib and sit here. Oh, that's nice. I wish I were having prime rib instead. Of yeah. yeah. I mean, Come on I, by. We got a piece. I love turkey, but prime rib. Oh, my God. Yeah, we decided to go get some prime rib. Tell me this. Tell me, how, how many pounds of prime rib is it? Uh, it's just a, a one rib, you know. It's uh, about that wide. I mean that thick? Yeah, that it's, thick. Yeah, it's not that wide. If it were that wide, it'd be a very small yeah. prime rib. Yeah, yeah. And it's about that one. So, how much did that cost you? Uh, thirty-three bucks. I oh, think. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. Do you remember the days when that used to cost it like ten bucks? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> boy. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. It's Harris Ranch. <laughs> Oh, Harris Ranch, good stuff. Yeah, you know, it stinks good when you're going down I-5. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It stinks well when you're going down I-5. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Harris Steaks are steak in California, basically. If I remember correctly, they're just yeah. in California. Yeah. And you actually get them driving down Highway, uh, what, 101? I-5, I-5. I-5. Yeah, just south of uh, Chowchilla there. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you ever stop? Is Anderson's pea soup still off that road too? Or yeah, they, it's still there. They're still there. Yep. Wow. Yep. The worst pea soup I've ever had. Yeah. It really much. wasn't it's good. Pretty run down. Everybody went, oh, let's go to Anderson's pea soup, and then you go there, and it. it, it my wife makes better pea soup. Yeah, it's right yeah. over the hill from us in Santa Nella yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty run down these days. And uh, Charlie, of course, uh, and then uh, where are you going? Uh, doing what are you doing for you know the holiday? I'm just watching football all day. All day. Yeah, me too. All day. It's on all day. You know what I'm going to do? Not watch football all day. <laughs> yeah. I still don't understand how it's played. <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway, and then and we should have a football party and sit here and teach you how to watch it. And then you can say, I know how to watch football. Well, no, I, I I know how to watch football. Me, Charlie, and, and Josh can all sit here and tell you how to watch. I know how to watch football. I just don't know <laughs> what's happening, okay? But I know how to watch it. In fact, I'm the guy you invite over to a Super Bowl party, and then you have some kind of pool, and so I enter the pool just because I want to be one of the good guys, and I win every yeah, time. Yeah, you win. I win every time. Because and, that guy has a nice ass or something. Yeah. But no, I, they want they want, immediately want the money back from me. 
Yeah. 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 You, you can't have it. You don't know anything about football. You, yeah. You, I did. One time I went to a Super Bowl and won 100 bucks. Yeah, that always happens. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't. I didn't My wife it. won because she liked the color of the uniforms of the team that she'd been on. Well, that's sweet and nice. You know, yeah. that's good. Well, we used to have an office pool where, you know, the girls up front would always go, Oh, I like this guy. He's got a nice butt, and this guy's got a nice color in his uniform, and this number is nice, and and, and she always won. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Like, oh, we boy, don't let her in boy, anymore. Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I want to. I, I I guess I guess I'll, I'll get serious early on in the show here. Good. Uh, because uh, I, I, there was something that I wanted that I thought of after the show the other night. Uh, Josh and I kind of got into it about what was happening over there in Gaza, and uh, not that we get mad at each other and fight horribly or anything like that, but we disagree. And his point to me was, well, those people in Gaza, you know, were going along with Hamas, and uh, I, I was trying to say, well, you know. They, they felt they couldn't exactly be against Hamas because their lives were at stake if they, if they did. And I didn't have any good example to give him. And then all of a sudden I thought about it after the show and I went, the Holocaust. Yeah. I mean, here you had, oh, say in a, in a, uh, in a, a, a concentration camp, let's say, how many thousands upon thousands of people and how many guards? Did they they could have taken them in a second if they all wanted to rebel, but they didn't. And you know, it is the it is the person, the group who's being victimized by someone else who finds it hard to react to that because of of the of, of the inherent danger in it. And uh, does that make any sense to you, Josh? Well, the, weren't they in prison? They were in prison, but so was. What, how about how about the people in Gaza? What is that but a open air prison? They can't leave. They can't leave. Well, it does make sense. Um, I would say what sort of separates it is that in the world that we live in now, it would certainly be much more practical, if you will, for the people of. Gaza to have indicated openly their desire to have help eradicating that situation or taking their country back I hate to use that term you know or whatever you want to call it much easier than it would have been or was for Jews uh, in 1939 1940 well there was only there was only one rebellion that I yeah. know of that Jews did in the entire war and that was yeah. the, that was in the Warsaw ghetto the uprising in the Warsaw ghetto yeah I mean you know you had organized pockets of partisans who were not imprisoned who did uh, fight a uh, guerrilla style war um, at times uh, as part of resistances and things like that of course mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't think you know. I certainly don't think that Jewish people in the Holocaust walked into it willingly. I mean, uh, no, it's not a matter they walked right, into right, it willingly, yeah. but they it, right. they certainly it, it rolled over them, and there were it was very little resistance. Well, I I yeah, look, I at times don't understand it, and I have to remind myself that it was a long time ago and things mm -hmm. were very different and that's why I'm saying is you know I, I do think now that if two years ago five years ago even ten years ago if the people of Gaza had said to the world you know we hate these folks and they tricked us or this wasn't a real election we didn't vote for them they hostily took us over and we want to make a deal with you Israel will you help us get rid of these people and afterwards, we can have real meaningful peace talks and things. Yeah, but you're, you're, you, I think you, the world would have you, you, helped. You're thinking they had the freedom to do that. You well, know, you know I, they, these, are people, I, these are people not only fearing for their own lives, but mm -hmm. they were fearing for the lives of their families and so on. Well, I, I agree you with know. that. But, I mean, there are people in Gaza who pick up a telephone and call people in the United States and talk to them every day. 
It's not as if they were close. It's not as if they lived in. I North don't think. Korea. I don't think they're getting on a telephone right now. I really well, they're don't. Not today. I don't but think that's, so. That's yeah. that's not. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, two months ago. Ch two years ago. Five years ago. I'm just saying it's not. It's not North Korea by any stretch, mm -hmm. as far yeah. as being close to the outside world and the people that live within it being in a sense brainwashed because it's closed to the outside world i think um, i think you're being a little naive about the way life is there and what the lives of what people had to live under with hamas as a yoke you know well, again if wait, wait a minute charlie has his hand up no yeah charlie yeah. the problem with that logic is that the people, uh, Hamas could say the same thing about the the uh, innocent civilians in Israel because they voted for Netanyahu who's doing all these horrible things to the Palestinians. So uh, there's no innocent civilians in, in Israel either. They could blame me as a Jew for because of what not Netanyahu is doing in spite of the fact that I don't approve of what Netanyahu is doing. I mean, I don't know that I buy... And quite frankly, you yeah. know, I heard somebody say it the other day, and this wasn't somebody who was anti-Israel or anything like that. It was just in a discussion of the situation. People f tend to forget that in many ways, Israel is an apartheid state. You know, that, that, that uh, the Palestinians, really, there is no welcome for them there. You know, and 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 that in and of itself is apartheid. Yeah. You know, so it really, I'm and I'm not saying Israel's all to fault. What I say is to fault is that in the how many years since Israel became a state, nobody's done anything to get the homeland for the, a homeland for the Palestinians. You know, and they well, and that's what they that's what they're bitter about. But they have, you know, not had. Yeah, most yeah. of the time, leaders who are willing to do that, and well, Arafat, in, Arafat did it, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying is, you know, since it's been a while, is my point. Yeah. Since either side had leadership that was mm -hmm. interested in fixing the problem, you know, permanently, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the 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 Palestinians have not had leadership that was probably genuinely interested in that. I mean, Hamas certainly isn't, right? Right, right. Well, um, well let's remember something, folks. You know, and I, I want people to remember this always. As an American Jew, okay, not an Israeli and not a Zionist, but as an American Jew, I want you to know that when it comes to Hamas, in spite of the fact that I've always been pro-Palestinian, okay, I am anti-Hamas. I mean, Hamas to me, being in, in, in these people who say, well, you know, I'm de defending Hamas, you just can't defend them. That's like you defending a Nazi, the Nazi regime during World War II. I mean, these are evil, horrible people who are, are, are hateful and don't want to solve the problem. But uh, the, what they did the other day made the lives miserable for countless thousands in Gaza. And, you know, of course, I'm sure the Gazans don't love them for that, but they have no love for Israel either because of all those bombs have been lobbed on them. Well, that's a fair enough point, but at some point, the Palestinians have to decide what they want. And if, 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 if they decide... They've already said what they want. Better for us to work with the Israelis and find a peaceful what, solution. What they, but you try and do that with the, but the Israelis have never been that cooperative with it. You know, the, the, what they've been asking for for years is a two-state solution. You know, mm -hmm. they want their own homeland, and they and yeah. because quite frankly, the one they had was taken away from them. And I think the Americans are supportive of that. Uh, at least, right now, the. Leadership they're, they're, that's in place now, you, but you know something. It, it, they're only uh, they're only behind them as long as it doesn't impact your political position in this country. I think that Biden, in every decision he's made in this situation, has been thinking about the upcoming election. Well, I don't know that I agree with that because I've heard day after day that poll after poll after poll show that this is eradicating any 
uh, goodwill he had with young voters, and he's still doing it anyway. I don't know why this would affect young voters, though. I mean, well, begin. Uh, they, what do you care anyway? They, what, do you think what, do you, what do you care anyway? They don't vote. <laughs> you well, know, I mean, I mean, all I know is polls are telling him that what he's doing is not right, and he's doing it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because young voters don't have uh, they don't they don't have an understanding of this, and they don't have an yeah. understanding of history, really. But, but you know what I'm? You know, I, they I, don't understand. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, that yeah. peace comes about mm -hmm. only after war. You know, you know what I'm getting a little no. sick of, though? I, I read every day, I read about some, oh, I know, actress, like this is actress in the Scream 7 movie. <laughs> they're never, they're never going to use her again because she did a post. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. She that defended thing. Palestinians or something. I mean, this is a situation in which there are two sides and there are two opinions, maybe more than two opinions, uh, and, and to suddenly fire somebody because they don't have the prevailing position but that is like popular. It. Welcome to the 50s. Re yeah, yeah, but really, is yeah. really, this is this like is the 50s. Right? Huh? It's I just watched the thing on McCarthy and this is exactly like it. Yeah. Even if it's anything, if you didn't agree with somebody's political stance when you were on the radio while now, Alex, they probably would have fired you if you just didn't go lock well, stock. I've been saying, what I've been saying about the Palestinians here is what I've been saying for the last forty years on radio. It's been my a constant position for me. And if I were to take this position today, say I was on Sirius XM right now and took this position, I probably wouldn't have a job tomorrow. Oh, I believe that. You I know, really believe and, that. And, and, and uh, quite frankly, I felt that, that uh, there's never been a really good dialogue going about that situation because it was always closed down on one side or the other. And, uh, you know, I always felt, I always felt for, the, uh, for the Palestinians. I always felt that they, they needed their own homeland and to feel invested in a homeland. Um, are you taking your blood pressure, Brian? Yes, I have my kids still. Every night. <laughs> Every night. Really, I, got, I can send you a message. Anyway, anyway. I, so, I, I so, wouldn't do it during the show because it would be too high. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. But what I'm saying is I, I think that the, what's going on with people who have an opinion on this suddenly... Uh, immediately there's this idea that if you're pro-Palestinian, you're anti-Semitic. And that is absolutely yeah, yeah. a tricky. false no. thing to believe. I don't think you agree. You you believe that, do you, Josh? You know, that somebody's anti-Semitic if they're pro-Palestinian? No, it's, it's, no, I don't think that's true. I mean, to begin with, you can't be anti-Semitic because uh, Palestinians are Semitic. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Touche. Well, yeah. and what I just said, a lot of people don't know. They don't yeah. know that fact. Yeah, they wouldn't probably know that, Alex, that little tidbit. They don't know any of the... Uh, most people who are arguing this do not know the history of Israel, of that whole situation. Yeah. I was born into it. It, when I, it happened when I was eight years old. And I remember um, the first time I really understood that there was an Israel was when we, I went to, to Sunday school. Yes, we had our, our, our religious studies on Sunday in Marin <laughs> County. That's how Wednesday. Jewish we were in Marin I County. On Wednesday, my mother took me. <laughs> but I remember that I went, and every week you would bring a dollar to plant a tree in Israel. <laughs> Uh, is somebody else? True. Is there anybody Jewish tonight who's here? No. No, but that is true. Remember that? I remember I had Jewish friends that used to do, do that. Do you had, uh, well, wait a minute. Okay. We can ask. We can ask Jeff. He's Jewish. He's Stein. Stein. Yeah. Yes, Stein. Yeah. Stein is Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Mean he's he's Jewish. Clear. His, 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 his lens looks like Tony's used to look like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josh, I'll send you. I'm gonna clean your lens. So. Yeah. There are too many like lights. There are too many lights in back of you, <laughs> you Jeff. Like UFOs in your house. <laughs> yeah. Too many lights in back of you, I like Jeff. Your house in Connecticut. But anyway, we used to we used to plant trees. I plant. I must have planted a whole yes. forest in Israel by the time I got through. My <laughs> yeah. And, it was a gesture, though. Yeah, I remember as a kid. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, you remember that? Here's another Jew. You, do you remember planting trees in Israel? Yes. You know. <laughs> and that's the thing. What? Yeah, you're right. Yes, you're right. You're, you're, right. you're right. You would go up. It was like, how much was it? A quarter per tree, or was it a dollar per tree? 
I hope I, you were right, Alex. I yeah, I know. People used to have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, these lights are great. It's like you see. You have up. all those lights in back of you, Jeff. <laughs> Weird. You beamed up. Clean your lens. Let me move. Well, the lens has nothing to do with it. It's where no, the, I think you're right. position. It's the brightness of the lights. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I also have a. We're so demanding. We're, we're, well, know, you know. Now the fun. Now the, there's one huge light. Well, it, it, yeah. it's not as bad as the other thing. The other thing looked like a spaceship was coming. Down. I like when the light. Comes anyway, no. So, oh, yeah, we used to, we do, used to do that giving uh, giving a tree, planting a tree in Israel. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and um, you know, I, and I so I grew up in that era. You know, it was 1948, and then about 1953, I was going to. I was I was getting my bar mitzvah and I was planting trees oh in Israel and stuff like that, and uh, so Israel has kind of always it, it didn't exist before I was uh, in my early part of right. my life, but eight years Thank in it did years. exist, right. yeah. And, and I, but okay. I didn't realize the the politics of it all until years started to pass and I started to see what was going on over there, and that if people would come to me and they would go, well, how do you feel about your homeland of Israel? <laughs> See, I was just going to ask And you I that, go, yeah. no, it's not my homeland. I was born here. I'm an American. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Jewish American. Yes. Okay, I or, mean, yeah. I mean, uh, actually, I'm an American Jew because I'm a G American first by country. Yeah, a so Jew, a, and a oh. Jew, not not so much by religion. I believe in it, in my case, as a nationality as well. You oh, you do, I'm going to ask you that. Do you do that, Alex, as a as a nationality or more of a faith? What do you think, uh, Jeff? Do you look at it as a nationality? I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, well, I feel like I'm Jewish. Well, we have no doubt, no doubt. Well, we know that. Yeah, yeah, I would think it would be faith, though, no? Uh, <laughs> but, I mean. I've been to Israel twice. Yeah. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I went on business. Some of the people I liked, some of the people I didn't like. Oh, that's like anything. You know, part of it was an interesting place to go. Yeah, but what I'm not saying to you, though, is as an identification, do you identify as, as being a Jew as a nationality, or do you look at it as being a religion, or both? How do you look I'm at more it? More of a religious. I, would, yeah, I also wait. look at it as, as, a, uh, as a race, actually. I look okay. upon it as, because it has a long historical legacy, you know, yeah. and, and, and we do have certain physical characteristics, you know, facial characteristics in the most part, except for the women, they all get nose jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, but true? <laughs> a lot of them do. Really? And then again, then again, I had a girlfriend who was Greek and she got a nose job too. So, you know. Oh, okay. So, wow. Yeah, but... My mom Italian, she got a nose job. She got a nose job. Yeah. Um, that was hurt. But the point is that I, you know, I just, uh, I've always thought of myself, I, I, everybody always says that to me, is it a religion or is it a nationality? And I said, well, it's a little of both. You know, it's a, from a historical <laughs> perspective, it's kind of a national, you know, it's kind of a, a, a nationality. Well, like being Italian or like being uh, Greek or whatever. And then yeah. I uh, kind of never really consider myself a time like when I like I was an Italian American because I never spoke. I spoke bits and pieces of it. I never really understood. Well, you don't have to line. speak Italian. Do you? do you know by being Italian or even part Italian that you can, you can move to Italy tomorrow and buy property and, and really? all of that and automatically get citizenship without even even I having to do that. anything? I, my yeah. brother went to Italy and I don't know if I ever told you this, Alex. When Shecky went to Italy, he went well, before we first met. He went to my grandmother's uh, hometown before I even knew that he went there. It was Naples, and he went there. And he said, it, and he was describing it to me, and it was exactly how my grandmother described it. It was like still like farmland, even years later. She saw him say how poor it was. He says it got a little better. Yeah. But, just, but it was always like she always just described it as like nothing there, really, all farm. Yeah. Well, you know, my, 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 pa my parents, my, my mother was born here. Uh, my father came from Germany, uh, and oh, prior to that, I think they were in Poland. Uh, uh, and he came over here in the early 20s. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So, and then he met my mother, and they had me, and the rest is history. 
How wonderful. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and here's the other end of it at 80, almost 84 years of you. age. What? And your mother lived to like 90 in the 90s. 100. 100. 100. God bless her, sorry. 100, yeah, yeah. We finally got some parking spaces back when she left, but, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, it, it always bothered me when people would say to me, well, how do you feel about your homeland, Israel? And I go, that isn't my homeland. I'm sorry. And I don't ever intend that it will be. Um, I never had any desire to go there. Okay. Was interesting. It sounds interesting to go, but that would be interesting. I'd like to go to Israel. Well, have like you ever that. met any Isra I I Israelis? Not really. A no. very arrogant bunch. Really? Very, they can be very mean. Yeah, yeah. I I found I especially the men, the women are are, are different, but the guys are, are uh, over the years I've found them to be quite arrogant. Yes, uh, and that's that's Israeli the nationality, okay, oh, yeah. not not Jewish, all right. Because there are people you know who live in Israel that aren't Jewish, uh, and are citizens here. Um, in fact, the two of the people they let go, I think, or that they that died and they returned their bodies the other day were I think from like uh, where uh, I'm trying to remember now but another country completely you wouldn't even think that that was a, it was almost like they kidnapped them and went whoops we, we got the wrong people here um, but who who's raising their hand uh, Alan Alan Tommy have you had a lot of coffee tonight what? what I actually right. only had one cup. He sent me coffee. I need your box. Well, wait a minute. One. Can I ask you a question? Did you send yes. me coffee? He did, Alex. It's did, it's was that you the one that sent me all that Starbucks coffee? Oh, you sent him Starbucks? I got. I think I got another brand. He no. did. Well, I got I one. Understand. I got one that came to to Bennett Miller, and that uh, that uh, and uh, you problem. didn't send that to me. Mm -mm. I'm oh, trying to I'm find sorry. out who sent you didn't send I didn't send it. Anybody here send it to me? Huh? No, I didn't send you nothing yet. I know your birthday is the seventeenth, I think, right? Eighteenth. Eighteenth, I'm sorry, eighteenth. Yeah. What I was gonna say is every time you say something. Oh, by, by, by the way, turn your mic down right. a little bit. Turn your My mic down. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you're distorting. Sorry. Yeah. I'll come back. Oh, you're fine. Anyway, where were we? So anyway, so you know, it's just like I, 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 I kept. I was thinking about it a lot the last couple of days, and it really bothers me that a country's politics are being associated with my, my religious beliefs and my cultural heritage. Okay, uh, and that a, a horrible, horrible guy like Netanyahu, who I consider disgusting, uh, is a person who is creating probably more anti-Semitism in the United States than any other single person because of his actions. How long has he been in power? Alex? He's been in power, what, 12 years? Something like well, that, Josh? Do you know how long he's been in power? Something uh, like that, yeah. yeah. Too long. Yeah. Well, they may need change. He's not, helped the, he's not helped the situation. Yeah. Sure. But no, he, I think he's caused more anti-Semitism worldwide, actually, by his actions in this mm -hmm. case. You know, you, yeah, so my point, you know, just for clarification, yeah. I guess, is in the overall macro, whatever, <laughs> I think historically, the, the Israelis have overreacted many times. They've mm -hmm. chosen poor leaders. They have not helped themselves in the peace process mm -hmm. much overall over a long period of time. So... While I support them now, I have reservations with them and issues. My mini point to the mm. to today, if you will, is just that acknowledgement of a lot of things in you know with the Palestinians and in Gaza that are troublesome. I just don't view them as complete victims. The way everybody else does. Well, I think I, they yeah. bear some responsibility versus some people. Wouldn't, you, that wouldn't you say that the people none. in That's Israel, all. however, bear? Uh, oh, if, for, if, for instance, Hamas has been was elected in, to power in uh, 2012, I think it was. 
2007. Uh, 2007? That long yes, ago? that long ago. Half long the ago. people that are being bombed weren't even born when Hamas was elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And yet, for years now, they've had a pretty, pretty robust democracy in Israel, I think you will agree. And they keep re-electing this dope. You know, yeah. they keep re-electing this, what I consider yeah. one of the worst leaders in the, in the world. Sure. Uh, and they, so, I mean, aren't they just as complicit in all of this? Well, you know, I did it, say in the very beginning of all that that I have real trouble with Israel's policy mm -hmm. path that got them to this point. Now, I don't want that to mean, I think, oh, that... They hadn't done all that. That wouldn't October seventh. No, no, that's that's horse crap, right? That's like people saying Listen, nobody oh, can give Osama bin Laden a reason he wouldn't have. Uh, if somebody it, says they're uh, for uh, Hamas, that point, if, if somebody says they're for Hamas, then I'll be all over their ass. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, right. But if they say they're for the Palestinians, I don't consider them particularly anti-Semitic. But like I was watching right. TMZ today, and the head of the guy on that show was equating being pro-Palestinian with being anti-Semitic. And I went, you're well, an idiot. I, you're a yeah. moron. And he's Jewish. He should, he hear, should know better. Yeah, I didn't hear what he said. But, I mean, it's entirely possible to like Palestinians and like Israelis. I mean, you know, I mean, I do. I mean, it's, it's, I, mean I don't, you know, if a Palestinian walked down my street right now, I wouldn't throw a rock at him. Yeah, the only reason I'm pro-Palestinian <laughs> very heavily and have been for the last 40 years, as it were, almost my entire time on the radio yeah. doing talk shows, mm -hmm. is because uh, I, 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 am, I feel for them because I, don't, I, I feel they had a homeland taken away from them and nothing was given to them, you know? And, and uh, uh, kids were growing up in the desert just being bitter against Israel because their home had been stolen from them. You have to put yourself in their position. You know, they have a reason to be bitter. Uh, but let's, take, let's stop adding to that bitterness by acting like we did in Gaza, by bombing them to a fairly well, and creating a whole new generation of children, some of which are even premature right now, who will grow up hating Israel. You know? Well, they, they teach. Hmm? I don't know what's going on. My volume should be better, right? Yep, yeah, much better, okay. much better. They teach kids in Palestine, in, in, in Gaza, to hate Jews, to kill Jews. No, not Jews. No, they don't do that. Palestin no. pa uh, uh, Israelis, Palestinians. Zionists, but, you know, not Jews. Hmm. Uh, pal yeah, okay, Israels. Yeah, well, them. I mean, but, but, but they have a history of having this feeling about Israel because they were displaced. They were completely displaced. I mean, yeah, suppose, you, so suppose you had a home. Let's say you had a home in 1948 mm -hmm. in, 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 in Palestine at the time, and the UN said, oh, tomorrow this is Israel. You all have to get out of here. And your home is appropriated from you, and people are moving into it and living in it now, and you're out in the desert somewhere. Aren't you going to be a little bitter? Yeah. Yeah. Except, except yeah. for that was 75 years ago. That may be 75 years ago, but, you know, it, nothing's been done in that 75 years to correct the situation. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, and, and to say, well, look, the rest of the world does care about you, and here's a place where we think you can be. You know, I mean, the Jews should have been given part of Germany. That's what the Jews should have been yeah, given. Yeah, I mean, they got, that was it. They, they got a raw deal there. They should they give the Palestinians, uh, like, Indiana. Nobody cares about Indiana here. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I, you know, I, you know? I, 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 and then I, it gets them away from Israel and the Jews, and uh, there might be a few synagogues in Indiana, but in any case. No, no, but I'm saying that, you know, with, uh, what happened was is that the, the this, here's what I, uh, I keep questioning. The decision in 1948 was made by who? The Senate, who's in the UN, right? Huh? The UN. Yeah. Where are they right now? Well, they're on the ground, yeah. Are they doing anything to try and solve this problem? I mean, it, some of their subsidiary organizations like UNESCO and so on are supplying, uh, you know, supplies and things like that to try and help. 
But they are not in there trying to solve the problem. In fact, even some people were arguing about it at the UN the other day, and that's all that happened to it. There was no resolution passed. And they're the people responsible for this mess. So I didn't send you any copy, Alex. I sent Tony copy two weeks ago. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate well, that. Well, and you threw me, and I won't be sending you any more copy. You just threw me under the bus. You're not supposed to say anything. Why do you keep sending him coffee? Do you hate me that much, Alan? No, 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 I don't. Because he likes coffee, and he's only on the show once in a while. So yeah, I, yeah. I try a new coffee. I send him some. Yeah, but it, at least it looks like I. We haven't really had had a solution here, but at least maybe some people would some of the some of the people will get out of there, the hostages. So at least that's a beginning. At least somebody's yeah. talking to somebody. Well, we'll see if you know if the. Uh... Hamas holds up their side, you know. I, I suspect that they'll play games, but I hope they don't, you know. Well, uh, I, I don't think, I seriously doubt that Netanyahu would go along with this if he didn't think they were going to live up to their side of the bargain, you know. Yeah, no more, nobody's more skeptical than he is, yeah. you know. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, hopefully, you know, it works out for people, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, look, and to further clarify, I don't, I, I can't stand Netanyahu. Yeah, I no. Mean, I, I think the only thing that I can't stand more than Netanyahu is people in the media constantly calling him BB as if he's like their best friend. Yeah, you see some cute. He's some, I like to punch those people in the face. Like it's your, it's your cute little puppy. You own. But he's a terrible leader, and... Not a very good person, honestly, from everything that I hear. I I don't know what their thinking is uh, electing him, other than very similar to some of the Trump crap here. He's a bit of a nationalist. Israel is known for a desire for nationalism. And that's what I said at the beginning was they have made some foreign policy and mistakes mm -hmm. along the way. And they probably do need to understand that long term, the only way to avoid much of this in the future is to get down to business of, of solving this problem and start talking and don't stop talking until it's done. If that takes a year, it takes a year. Yeah. You know, but they have to figure it out. But it's, you know, it, until the bombing stops, I don't think you're going to come to any real solution. You know, um, and Probably and I, I don't I don't think Hamas is going to give up everybody because I think they need a, a bargaining chip. You well, know, yeah, I mean they're. A, I think using people, human beings, as a bargaining chip is pretty crappy. Yeah, I mean they're. A, you know, but they're a terrorist organization. So yeah, of, yeah. You know, right? Of course. So, I mean, I think probably. I mean, I don't know this, right? But I would assume that Israel's design their end game if they wanted to negotiate a real peace would be to remove and eradicate Hamas by force and then approach the Palestinians with mm -hmm. who would you like your new government to be and let's negotiate with them to solve this problem once and for all yeah. that's what they should do Yeah, I don't know if that's what they will do you know because I don't work there so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but it, you know, I mean, that's what they should do. I, you know, they keep. I notice that they they keep uh, bombing Gaza, and I keep thinking to myself, is there anything left to bomb? I mean, from what I've seen, that that the country's just rubble now. The hospital's still standing. Kind of, it part of it's gone. Yeah, well, but they were hiding Hamas underneath. That was the there's, a, they, there's still quite that, but I haven't seen any proof of that yet. Well, I don't know what you guys need for proof. They took CNN through there, and no, but no, they didn't take well, them through there. Where are the Hamas people they've captured under the hospital? Where are the dead bodies they've killed under the hospital of Hamas? Well, if they had them, they'd have been parading them in front of the news media every day. They say there's a blast door down there, but I'm sure there are other entrances to the uh, to that place. They have all they showed were a cache of of, of weapons of weapons. Wait a minute, a cache of weapons, and uh, and and a uh, tunnel. Okay, those were the two things they showed them, and it was showed to them by the Israelis. 
Right. And so you're saying the Israelis went there and drilled that tunnel? No, you, no, I'm saying no, I'm sure I'm the, I'm, I, I'm sure those tunnels exist, but I don't know that that hospital was necessarily a headquarters for Hamas. I don't know if it was a headquarters, but it was used for Hamas to get in and out of wherever. Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. Were. Let's say you're a terrorist organization. And you're going to build some tunnels, and you're going to put your your uh, your troops somewhere. Okay, isn't under a hospital a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, but, yeah, uh, that's my point. Uh, no, but I, 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 the point is that, like, for instance, uh, what do they what do they say the other day? Uh, I'm trying to think now. I'm trying to go back to this. Uh, that uh, uh, oh yeah, they had pictures of them right after the attacks bringing people into the hospital. I saw that. Uh, Hamas supposedly bringing in people, but they were right. all bloody. I mean, yeah, they were they bringing were them into the, the hospital. And who knows what they did. Well, no, but they were bringing them into the hospital, not because that's where they were going to hide them. They brought them into the hospital because they felt they needed uh, help. I mean, for instance, I heard of one guy, and I don't know where he is and how he's doing now or whether he's even still alive, who got his arm blown off. You know, what, what are they going to do with somebody like that? Maybe they can let him die, or they can try and take him to a hospital. You know, I don't know. Look, I don't know what that cache of armaments were. Uh, they look like uh, a scattered amount of weapons that had been gotten from somewhere. Um uh, Israel it, it, doesn't it, it, use AK-47s because they're Russian-made. No, they use Uzis. That's right, and those weren't. That Uzis. still doesn't mean that they came. They got those guns from people under the hospital. They I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that Israel. I'm not saying. It, I'm not saying Israel planted those. But we can't okay. trust the source. Okay, you know, and even American news who's ready to jump in on something like that says we cannot verify any of this That's the fine. idf lies they lie every day i don't trust them as far as i can spit no it's a good thing you don't control them well we also can't trust anything hamas says exactly you know. i don't trust either side we're yeah. living we're living in what they call it's the old term the fog of war mm, okay yeah. and it's yeah. very definitely a fog yeah, and it, it's it's and sad. Israel's not doing themselves any favor by acting just as horrendous as Hamas acts. Yeah, yeah. War is messy, and I don't I don't agree. Wait a minute, is that, that it, can I write that down here? Uh, war is messy. We're gonna war quote. Hell. Oh boy, is it a mess! Wow, you know. If the KKK lynches my brother, does that give me the right to go to the Catholic Church down the street and grab every white person and lynch them? No, but that's not what they're doing. That's what Israel's doing. They killed ten times as many civilians so you, as so, Hamas killed. So if if Mexico shoot it, uh, throws a missile over the border, uh, hey, look, in California, hey, look, would you agree? Would you would, 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 would you would you would you would you would you would you agree at least that Israel didn't show sufficient restraint? No, I don't agree with that oh, at all. Oh, you don't. Okay. They gave them a month. So How so much so so. Oh, it gave killed. them a month to what? Leave. And so, therefore, we will kill. We will homes? kill. We will kill children. We will. Uh, we will have uh, premature babies not, without any incubators. I was I mean, a premature. They, I, I know you, you get the. You, you take those premature babies and you just let them loose. And I. I saw that movie with that killer baby. Remember that movie? It's alive years ago. I saw that. They can be very dangerous. I was a preemie. I was born three months early. Wow. And it shows, Tony. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was in that bit. I mean, it was no, just, no. it's just, but it's just, so it's I'm, a, I'm a lot more pro with and, and, and by the way, no, look, I'm looking. I'm every white person to move out of their house because I'm going to bomb their house. And let's go, let's go to the original situation that predicated all this, which is the attack by Hamas upon, upon Israel. Uh, right. Terrible. Just terrible. And yeah. horrendous. And I feel yeah. for every family who lost anybody in that situation. But, but a lot of people know? didn't die in Israel. A lot of people got injured from these bombs too. Yeah, but I feel and, for anybody that was mentally. affected by that action, okay? Now, how do you saw how do you get uh, how do you take care of that action? There are a lot of other, there are a lot of solutions. But, you know, you know World War II, we softened up the area with bombs and then we went in on foot and guess what Israel's doing? And do you think that was necessarily right? 
I do. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want you running my wars. I don't want you running my government either. Yeah, well. No. Okay. Sp- speaking of I which. Think, I, I think I think Hamas is, is crap. I think uh, Netanyahu and Trump came from the same slice of pie. I think they're both idiots and assholes. But, you know, Israel has the right to defend themselves. Let, let me take a quick, I, let me, uh, changing the subject here, okay? Let's go back to uh, Tony's uh, coffee. No, no. <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, as it stands right now, Trump versus Biden, elections tomorrow, who wins? I don't know. In other words, how about you, uh, um, Josh, how, how do you feel? Who wins? Um, I think Biden would win. How By how much? I mean, would it be a decisive victory or would it be something that is, you know. I think that, you know, obviously going to depend on turnout, of course. I mean, and I don't have zero way to gauge that, but I, I think that it would be very similar to last time. Mm-hmm. How about if all of a sudden, say in January, uh, Biden says, I decided I'm not going to run because I may not be able to win this election. I want this election to be won, and I'm endorsing. Um, uh, uh, What's his name in California? Gavin uh, Newsom. Gavin Newsom. Oh, now it's really? Gavin Newsom versus Trump. Who do you think would win that one? Gavin Newsom. Hands yeah. hands down. Yeah. I would definitely bet. And let's have uh, a let's have a debate. Let's see let's see how how Trump I, comes out on that I, one. I still I what? still think it's like Josh says. It depends the turnout. I okay. mean, last time the turnout was the turnout to beat Trump. Uh, who knows what the turnout's going to be this time? If people like think that you know Biden would win or Newsom would win automatically, and they don't come out, I mean, then where are we then? Yeah, yeah. But if it, it would be dependent upon Newsom to inspire people to get out and vote, you know, they keep saying the trouble with the with the, with, with Biden right now is he's losing the young people because of his stand on Israel and so on. And my answer has been: since when do young people vote? You know, I mean, saying that they won't, that he's lost the young voter. Well, I mean, did anybody have the young voter? Were they going to get out and vote? You know, what what do you think? Uh, yes, uh, Tony. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be close to the election like you think, and I'll tell you why. There's just too many things on Trump that's going against him. And I think he's just too divisive. Yeah, but really. you, he's got the highest rating. People it, don't care. The highest ratings right now. I don't know. I don't know who these people are. The thing, you know, I if, if I them. said to somebody 20, 30 years ago, back me up on this, Josh. If I had said, "Hey, this guy who's running for president has like four big charges against him, or you know, ninety six charges or something." Uh, are you going to vote for him? They go, no, I, you'd be crazy to vote for him. But t- right now, the majority of people you'll poll say, love Trump. What do you love about him? Yeah, I don't. I just don't believe the. I don't believe the polls. Then really, they just see way too many movies and too much television, and he's playing a role here that they seem to think is strong. Also, All I see when he's standing there with his arms folded is Mussolini. There's, there's, they, they're also talking to a lot of people who are not play, paying very close attention, and I do think there is something to be said to factor in that, let's say, the last 90 to 120 days leading up to the election, next May or June or whatever, when everything Trump says, every speech he gives starts getting national coverage every day, all day. Now, I know if you want to watch the cable news networks at night, MSNBC or something, they'll be doing it. Yeah. But people don't watch that. I'm talking about he he gave a speech today, and the 6.30 evening news leads off with him calling his enemies vermin that he promises to eradicate yeah. and arresting Biden. And I think as people start to see that every day, it's going to make them a little bit nervous. And and I think you're going to have a lot of people who are like, 
I just, it's too risky. I don't want violence and all that. Let's just keep with what we've got, you know? Well, you know, the, you know, the latest thing that Trump, go away. that Trump has been saying is that if he becomes president, he's going to get certain television shows taken off the air. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's... Uh, what makes him think as president he can do that? Is he will be giving those rallies every day when we're 90 days out or whatever, right? And it will move from Rachel Maddow's show or... Nicole Wallace's show, right? Mm -hmm. It'll move to, you know, the the ten, the six thirty evening news on CBS and NBC and ABC, and it will then be the focal point of this week with George Stephanopoulos and Meet the Press, and it will then be the headline in your local paper. Yeah, they'll carry the story from the Associated Press, right? And it will be on there next to the high school football coming up or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that's big in your town of 25,000 people. I think that it will be, and of course the ads will start then too. Right. You know, so, I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying. There's no ads against Trump right now yet either. I mean, I know there's none against Biden yet really, but there's no ads against Trump yet either and no trials in process yet either. So, I'm just saying that I think when people, I think there's a lot of people out there right now driving around, walking around, living, who are not really aware that he's given a speech twice now, just to make sure that you understood it the first time, that said he would find the communist. The, the uh, by Lindus, the way, by the way, by the way, you know, the vermin and eradicate uh, them from our let, midst. Let me ask you this, because you, you're very politically astute. Do you ever, in your daily travels, come across any Marxists? No, I haven't run isn't any that any Isn't that a term that is maybe over 50 years old and yes. doesn't even apply today? I don't even think in Russia you'd find any Marxists. Probably not. You know, so that's what I'm saying is I, I sort of wonder how some of those people will react uh, Ten months from oh, now. Oh, by the example. way, by the way, also he keeps referring to communists and Marxists. Even communists is an antiquated term. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't I think mean, he, even anybody in Russia considers themselves or calls themselves communists. Yeah, it's hard to t tell, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I wonder how people would react in ten months when they start hearing about that line, and then two lines later, promising the largest mass deportation in the history of our country. And to lock up anybody what? that ever disagreed with him. And so who, yeah, so how, who's going to perform this deportation and how are they going to, and I understand illegal aliens. But, but I, isn't, yeah, not, isn't this kind of, it. isn't this kind of diatribe the kind of thing we fought during World War II? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's my yeah. point is mass deportation. I mean, that's what they called the Holocaust, by the way, yep. was deportation. I mean, you know, uh, let's not pretend that they didn't. I mean, that's well, what they we've, it, Remember, was. remember, folks, in the beginning, Hitler didn't want to have concentration camps. He just wanted to send the Jews to any country that would have them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and, were, and by the way, no countries would take them except Spain. Spain and somehow yeah. so, this terrible guy, Franco, took a million <laughs> Jews. Wow, I mean that's amazing, really. Yeah, but there. But the United there, States, how many yeah. the United States took? Kind of none, right? Pretty much zero. But there is some. Um, you know, I have a wonder there of how people will hear that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that's what I'm saying is so who who performs the deportation and who who decides who needs deported and all. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. we'll have our own little Gestapo or whatnot ever. You know, I mean, yeah. Perhaps we'll need a state security service. Our, our theme is wow, playing, sure. by the way. This is our last show of the week because we're taking uh, uh, tomorrow off and Friday as well. Uh, Jack's going to be on tonight. Jack will, hopefully, you know. He, I mean, it, it's always he was a, on, he was off, he was on. He I was know, off. it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a crapshoot. Okay. I hope he's on tonight, too. Well, I hope so, too, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I had to deal with it last night. You know, sure. that was a night where I had the night off, and I didn't have the night off. So, anyway, but uh, it, it, we will we will be back 
you know, the first of next week. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody have a very nice uh, yeah. uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, you, Josh, will have a good Thanksgiving. Good Thanksgiving to you, Charlie. Good Thanksgiving, Jeff, to you and Pamela. Okay. Oh, thank you. And uh, and uh, yeah, uh, let me see here. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, Alan. Heaven. Alan, have a good Thanksgiving. Are you going somewhere for your Thanksgiving? Uh, my mother's. Good. Oh, yeah. And, uh, right. and uh, of course, uh, the wonderful and attractive Tony. Uh, you're going to be at your mother's for Thanksgiving? Only in the morning to put flowers and then to my sister's house. We made her <laughs> cheesecake, Alex. We figured it out. Okay. Ooh. All righty. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Bri- uh, 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 Brian. Brian. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> you've, been a little, you've, been a little, you've been a little quiet tonight, but uh, well, you know how we enjoy you, too. We enjoy all of you. You're really yeah. terrific. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week, hopefully on Monday. Bye. And that's it. Well, there they go. They're all going away. Let me just... Uh, Put me up here. There we go. Uh, There goes the citizen panel. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another citizen panel right after me on the Jack Bishop program, The Intersection. Uh, You can call him on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again Monday on the pop-up show uh, at uh, 4.30, uh, rather 4 o'clock Eastern Time on Facebook, and then again uh, next uh, mo- Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Gobble, gobble.